Good morning, everyone. Um, hey, I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you again uh, for the invite. Um, and my name is, as James said, is Shahid Al Shahil. I'm from Saudi Arabia, and I am a social entrepreneur. I co-founded an organization called Just. Uh, we use technology to tell people where their clothing comes from. Uh, and when the team at uh, uh, Creative Mornings told me about the theme this month, uh, humility, I sat there and I thought about the word and, and reflected on it. And it immediately took me back to five years ago. I was a, uh, a young, uh, excited MBA student, uh, maybe even a little naive, and I wanted to make a big difference in this world. And uh, that motivation had taken me to Rwanda. Uh, I was there working on a consulting project with the Ministry of Health and an international aid agency. Um, and my time in Rwanda was very difficult. Uh, I was confronted for the first time with the bureaucracy of aid and inefficiency of aid and maybe a little humbled by the fact that I wasn't maybe going to make a big difference in this world. Uh, and I vividly remember sitting uh, in my tiny hotel room in Kigali and there was a book on my nightstand a book that everyone had told me I should read before I go to Rwanda, but I'd sort of put it off. And one evening, I picked it up, uh, and I couldn't put it down. Um, the book is called The Blue Sweater uh, by Jacqueline Novogratz, and in it was an important uh, lesson in humility that really became core to the way I um, live my life and the way I see my role in my work. Um, and I guess provided me with a new lens to, to think through how I can make a difference in this world. So in the book, uh, Jacqueline says that in order to do the work that we do in poverty alleviation, uh, leaders need to have the humility to see the world as it is, yet the audacity to imagine it as it could be. And in that tension between those two, the humility, the groundness of, yes, the realities of this work is very difficult, and yes, it's going to take time, um, and yes, we might not succeed from the first try, yet not giving up and imagining and having that sort of drive to still uh, go through it and imagine it as it could be. Uh, it reinvigorated me at the time. At the time, I was completely frustrated and feeling like maybe I can't make a difference. Uh, so since then, I'd uh, worked for Acumen, the organization that Jacqueline had started, and learned even more lessons in, in leadership and humility and, and what it really takes to change the way the world tackles poverty. Um, and today, I am a social entrepreneur. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, Just uses technology to tell us the who, where, and what clothing comes from. Um, and that's important because each one of you today is wearing at least two or three items of clothing. Uh, and each of these items has a story, a story of who made it, where it came from, under what conditions. Uh, but often enough, if not mostly, all of us don't know that story, unfortunately. And, and the problem with that is that in the complexities of these supply chains, um, it's easy to hide human rights abuses, destructive environmental practices, everything from child labor to even death. Tomorrow is the 24th, right? Tomorrow is actually the anniversary of Rana Plaza, the big factory collapse that happened in Bangladesh two years ago, where over 1,129 people were killed making clothes for brands that we all consume every day. So, we use technology to connect brands and their consumers to the stories behind their clothing. And um, it's not an easy job um, to be an entrepreneur. How many entrepreneurs are in, in this room today? Show of hands, maybe. Great. You. Don't, don't be a shy entrepreneur. <laughs> um, 
it's yeah entrepreneurship is really difficult i guess in itself it's like a big you know exper experiment in in humility um but through it i guess i've learned a few things that i thought i'd share with you today um a couple of lessons that i think relate to uh humility uh the first one is uh about pivoting pivoting has become i guess my best friend uh, it wasn't when we first started. I didn't, didn't enjoy it. Uh, but it's essentially when your idea got, gets a dose of reality. Um, I think as an entrepreneur, it's, it's um, very hard to continue believing in yourself and your idea. And, and sometimes you just want to throw in the towel. Uh, but I think we learned very early on that it's so important to take that idea out of its shiny box and get out there and talk to people, to customers, to beneficiaries, to actually hear their feedback and, and see what they think of your product. Um, and that if, that if you actually take on that feedback, you'll probably get to a place where your business is, is more successful. Um, and I think the distinction that we learned is, is not to be so obsessed about our idea, which often entrepreneurs are, uh, but to be obsessed over what the problem that we're solving is and who we're solving it for and how are we going to get paid for it. That's really the drive uh, rather than like the idea that you first started with. So to give you an example, uh, when we first started Just, from the beginning our mission was that we want to create transparency in supply chains and we want to reward suppliers that are doing the right thing. Uh, but we thought in the beginning that we're actually going to be moving, physically moving products back and forth between these suppliers and the brands. We went out there and we spoke to brands and suppliers and people in that industry and realized early on, um, thank God that we realized that early on, is that the fact to go with that model, it's very capital intensive, and there are a lot of people that are actually moving products back and forth. What's actually missing is information about the, those products. And so we had this major pivot where we became an information-based company. Um, and since then, had many smaller pivots. But it's, you start realizing, I guess, when a pivot is right, that it's actually exciting and it provides new light and showcases really progress that you're actually moving forward. Um, and the second lesson uh, that I've learned on humility is that you really can't do this alone. Uh, you need an entire network and an ecosystem of people that will be there, that will support you, that will tell you the hard truth uh, when you need to hear it. And um, I have a co-founder. Her name is Natalie Grillen. Uh, and when she sees this, hi, Natalie. <laughs> uh, she, I wouldn't be able to be here today uh, if it wasn't for both of us, because we challenge and complement each other in in very important way and support each other in very important ways. Uh, but we also have a network of people who are there to, to help us throughout. And, I hear a lot from entrepreneurs that, oh, well, I don't know anyone and I like, don't have that network. And, and we didn't either when we began. But uh, you'd be surprised how many people will actually answer cold emails <laughs> and would be willing to uh, be generous with their time and, and give you that time and feedback. And so uh, to, we put our pride aside and, and went out there and, and talked to as many people that will talk to us. And we got some shut doors. but. We had a lot of uh, open doors as well. Uh, and we are here today and got our first client actually based on that network and, and going out there and genuinely being um, interested in hearing those people's feedback rather than just wanting something out of them. Uh, so those are the, the two lessons that I've experienced in my short career as an entrepreneur um, in humility. Uh, but I guess I'll leave you at the end with, uh, with something that we truly believe at Just is that the real change happens in the accumulation of all the small choices that we make every day. Um, and in those choices are, are the clothing that we're wearing. And so 
tomorrow, as I mentioned, is, is the anniversary of Rana Plaza. And uh, there's a global movement that happened uh, annually last year and it's happening again called Fashion Revolution Day, where consumers are asked to wear their clothing inside out and mention it on social media and ping the brands and ask them who made my clothes. Um, I think it's a very important role that we can play to actually showcase that there is demand and that we do care and that we want to create change with that choice um, that is our clothing. So, thank you.